mysterion, or the sacrament of baptism, originates from the Greek term baptizing to wash or immerse, and its verb form baptizo to wash or immerse, because of its literal meaning. Baptism is closely connected to the element of water. What and why is it related to water? Water is a crucial element in the universe's existence, as nothing exists without water. Similarly, when God created the universe, everything emerged from water, as seen in the second day of creation. After the light on the first day, God established water as a significant element on the second day. Christian baptism, in terms of its topology, began in ancient times with the event of the Great Flood. The Great Flood occurred because humanity had become exceedingly sinful, defying their Creator. So God needed to wash away those sins. For 150 days, the cosmos was immersed in rainwater, lasting for 40 days and 40 nights. In this event, everything with breath perished in the floodwaters, except for Noah's family and a selection of animals aboard the ark here. Water is associated with the act of destruction. Similarly, the significance of Christian baptism is further emphasized in the event of the Israelites crossing the Red Sea. At that time, the Israelites, led by the prophet Moses, were being pursued by Pharaoh and his army. Through his servant Moses, God parted the waters of the Red Sea to allow the Israelites to escape. Pay attention to the tone of verse 21. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind. This is a symbol of how God's mighty power works, accompanied by the blowing of a strong east wind, which caused the sea to become dry land. What is conveyed through this event? It is the sacramental action of God through his word and his spirit to liberate, sanctify the people of Israel from the power of evil. It was the word of God that carried out the will of God the Father to divide the sea with the means of the blowing of the Holy Spirit, the east wind. God, who looked with compassion upon the people of Israel, his chosen nation, performed an act of salvation by leading them through the Red Sea into the wilderness of Sinai. Out of compassion for the chosen people, God intervened to save them by parting the sea and allowing them to cross safely into the Sinai desert. Here, water is related to salvation. From these two topologies, the Church, specifically the Orthodox Church, views the exoteric dimension of Christian initiation through baptism as containing an esoteric dimension as a mystery of God's people being washed and saved. The Church, therefore, becomes a community that has undergone purification and received the gift of salvation. Through baptism, every believer's sins are forgiven and salvation is obtained. The practice of baptism finds its background in the Jewish practice of immersion tevila. Tevila, meaning immersion, involves the act of immersing oneself in water in ancient times. Jews used rivers for this purpose, but in later and modern times, specially constructed pools called mikvah were used. In John 3, 22-26 and Hebrews 6-2, Christian baptism seems to be connected with the practice of Jewish immersions. In particular, John's baptism is seen as a Jewish ritual. Unlike Jewish baptism, which is a mere ritual washing like that done by John, Christian baptism, though also using water, is referred to as baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is because Jewish baptism is merely a sign of repentance, whereas Christian baptism, while related to repentance, is said to be for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The term gift of the Holy Spirit in Dorian to Ajiu Nevmatos in Acts 38 refers not to the various gifts of the Holy Spirit. Charismata to Ajiu Nevmatos, 1 Corinthians 12, but to the Holy Spirit himself, who is given to us at the time of baptism. Thus, Christian baptism is related to the reception of the Holy Spirit.
as shown in the story of Paul's encounter with the disciples of John who were not yet Christians. When Paul asked if they had received the Holy Spirit, their reply indicated they had never heard of the Holy Spirit because they were not yet Christians. Therefore, Paul asked, into what then were you baptized? This suggests that in Paul's mind, receiving the Holy Spirit is connected to baptism, and baptism is related to the essence of faith. So, when he initially inquired about their faith, he asked, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? This is what baptism means. In Christian baptism, there is no distinction between water baptism and baptism of the Holy Spirit. For the Bible statement, I baptize you with water, refers to John's baptism, which is a Jewish ritual baptism and not yet referred to as Christian baptism. On the other hand, Jesus' baptism, the Christian baptism, is described by John himself as baptizing with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Thus, there is a clear distinction between the meaning of John the Baptist's Jewish baptism and the Christian baptism administered by Jesus' disciples in the name of Jesus Christ. This baptism is founded on the person and work of Jesus Christ. Now, what is the role of the Holy Spirit in baptism? And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and, lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and lighting upon him. And, lo, a voice from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. The baptism of Lord Jesus does not imply that he had sins and needed to repent, for Jesus, as the incarnation of the Word, did not possess the potential to sin? However, the baptism of Jesus holds an extraordinary significance in the work of redeeming the world and humanity. St. Peter emphasizes in his letter, For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Here, St. Peter asserts that the essence of the universe is water, which aligns with what Moses recorded, that water serves as the foundation of creation by God. Evident from the mention of the darkness was upon the face of the deep, with Jesus' baptism and his contact with water. During his baptism by John the Baptist, it signifies that the essence of the universe has been redeemed. This highlights that the coming of the Word to earth is not limited to the redemption of humanity, but encompasses the entire earth and universe. This parallels the concept that due to the fall of man into sin, the earth and universe were also cursed. It's evident that the advent of the Word and his baptism serves to restore not only humanity, but also the entire world to its original state marking the beginning of the revelation of the Triune God, as Jesus is baptized and touched by water. During John the Baptist's baptism, it symbolizes that the essence of the universe has been redeemed. This demonstrates that the Word's arrival on earth is not just limited to redeeming humans, but the entire world and universe. This aligns with the idea that with the fall of humanity, the earth and universe were also affected. This signifies that Jesus' baptism is not only a means of restoring humanity, but also the cosmos itself. This concurs with the idea that with the fall of humanity, the earth and universe were also affected Genesis 3.17. Therefore, it's clear that the descent of the Word and his baptism serves to restore not only humanity, but also the entire world to its original state, marking the beginning of the revelation of the Triune God. Furthermore, the declaration of the Father's love to His beloved Son and the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, descending like a dove coincide with the opening of the Divine Revelation Trinity, for the first time in a clear and concrete form to mankind. This strengthens the notion 
that the Holy Spirit is not only proceeding from the Father God, but also resides within him. Thus, the baptism of Jesus holds an extraordinary significance, revealing the mystery of God's work to renew humanity and the world, while also initiating the revelation of the divine Holy Trinity.